Hi everybody, today we're going to draw the typical vertebra and this will help you identify these specific parts of any specific vertebrae when you look at the more specialized types and to begin with we're going to draw the body so we'll begin with just drawing a simple body here the base of the vertebrae then we'll continue and we'll draw a couple pedicles from Rise, emerging dorsally from the body, so call these pedicles. Pedicles is derived from the term for foot, small foot. Moving on, we're going to join these two pedicles with two lamina. So the pedicle and the lamina come together to form the vertebral arch. So the transverse process is a lateral pr projection from where the pedicle and the body unite. So this would be the transverse process. The spinous process would be found dorsally where the two lamina unite. It's a dorsal projection. That would be the spinous process. The articular process would be found where the lamina and the pedicle unite. So that would be an articular process. Now this could be cranial or caudal depending on whatever part of the vertebra you're facing. We're going to pretend this is a cranial aspect. So we could consider those a cranial articular processes. And finally, the vertebral foramina is basically this space formed within the arch, the vertebral foramen, and you put the foramen together and that's where the spinal cord travels and together the foramen form the vertebral canal. So one note clinically about the lamina is that we're going to include the articular process, the lamina proper, and the spinous process in our definition of the lamina. So we're gonna kind of enclose all these structures like this with a dotted green line, and we're going to refer to this as the actual lamina, the clinical lamina, and that's because during a laminectomy, this is the part of the vertebra that's removed to gain access to the spinal cord. Okay, so what can you do with this line drawing you just made? Well, you can apply it to all of the specific vertebrae and easily identify all the different structures with less memorization. So to start off with, you can do the body. Here's the three types of vertebrae. This is the lumbar. You can do the body. This is the thoracic. You can easily see the body on these three types of vertebrae, the base of the vertebrae. The next thing we will draw will, will be the pedicles. So we'll take the pedicles up to this point, we'll identify the pedicles, and with this we'll go up to like this point, and this point, and here we'll take the pedicles here, and here we're matching colors. Next we'll do the anatomical lamina. So we'll draw in the lamina here. So now you can see we have the body, the pedicle, and the lamina. We can easily identify those on each of these three types of vertebrae. Next, we'll look at the transverse process, which in your drawing, and by definition, it comes off laterally where the body meets the pedicle. So these would be transverse processes here. This would be the transverse processes in the thoracic. They're modified. This will be the transverse processes in the cervical vertebrae. The other easy one to visualize is the spinous process, and that comes off where the two lamina will meet. This would be outlining the spinous process of these vertebrae. And finally, we look at the articular process. So the articular process, by definition, comes off where the pedicle and lamina meet. So these would be articular processes. And in this instance, it's a little bit different. Here's the articular processes of the thoracic in here, again, where the pedicle and lamina meet. And these would be articular processes out in here 
of the cervical. Again, they're very much larger, but that's where the pedicle and lamina meet. And then don't forget, we go back and we do our clinical lamina, which is by definition the anatomical lamina, the articular processes and the spinous process. And so we have a good feeling for what is removed during a laminectomy. So now that we've identified these different structures, we can take a look at some of the general comparisons between the vertebrae. And we'll move from this cranial view to a lateral view. And you can see that, for example, the spinous process and the thoracic vertebrae is quite more extensive, especially in the cranial thoracic vertebrae compared to the other vertebrae. The spinous process in the lumbar vertebrae has a cranial basically orientation to it, so the animal's head is going to be this way. These are left lateral views, tails over here. Transverse processes of the lumbar vertebrae also have this cranial ventral um, orientation to them. And you can see the spinous process in the cervical vertebrae over here is the most reduced. The transverse processes are kind of sled-like, they're kind of enlarged. And finally, we'll look at the transverse processes of the thoracic vertebrae are reduced, and they have these basically fovea for articulation with the head of the rib. We can further look at these vertebrae then if we take them into a caudal view and make a few more general comparisons, and that is of the articular surface. So the articular surface in the lumbar region is in the more vertical plane. Okay, so they go up and down, and you can see the articular surface in the thoracic and cervical regions, they're in the more horizontal plane. So this acts to have more movement from side to side, like you can think of a cow turning its head to look at you when you approach her from behind, and this would have more effect in sort of flexing, if you want to call it humping, like a cat would do when it's scared or when a dog is defecating humping the caudal aspect of the spine or flexion. So when you do a crunch, that's essentially flexion of the spinal cord.